going to stop at the moment as far as I can see. And please, if somebody has any more details on this, I'd love to hear from you. But as, as far as I can see at the moment, there's nothing to stop me or anybody else setting up a rogue pod, for want of a better word, and maybe giving my user space to people that maybe want to sell you products, want to spam you with adverts, whatever, and then joining the Aspera network and submitting everybody to a, a deluge of unwanted rubbish that we see in Twitter and Facebook and quite a few of the other social networking sites that have become mainstream. So that, that was my first concern. The second concern I have is the opportunity for impersonation. Now, with the, the Aspera being decentralized and with it being built up of a, a series of pods, if you say, join my site, my pod, as John Smith, to all intents and purposes, when people are viewing just your stream, there'll be no difference between you as John Smith on my pod and John Smith on the official Diaspora pod. And that, again, is a little bit of a concern for me. Uh, it could be open to abuse. You could get into the realms of impersonation. And we have seen it on many other social networking sites before, but usually it's quite easy to tell the fakes from the, from the legitimate ones. So that was two areas of concern. I'm still reading up on it, and it's a, fa a fascinating subject. Um, the Diaspora service is absolutely fantastic. Not so much for the features that it doesn't have that you'd maybe seen in Google Plus or Facebook, but the community itself. Yeah, no, is, that's, that's yeah, and that's the it. important thing. I mean, this is what makes a social networking site. It isn't how many flashy features or bells and whistles it has. It's the people inside it that you're going to be speaking with. And that's where Diaspora is in a class of its own. Um, and it does actually make me ask the question, would I like to see Diaspora become accepted by the mainstream community because when that happens we get to see celebrities moving in on the on the action to try and promote whatever product it is that's sponsoring them at the time and then we get that followed by spam and it's one of the nice things about Identica was the fact that you didn't get much of the mainstream in inverted commas coming into that uh, environment that community and therefore the topics were very much 99% of the time on topic interesting and relevant and Diaspora has exactly the same thing so maybe if Diaspora was to remain niche uh, it wouldn't be such a bad thing. Um, and Google Plus and Facebook can be open for the for the mainstream that's want to talk about Lady Gaga and what was on the Jeremy Carl show yesterday. Um, but that's just that's just food for thought. And uh, sorry, back over to you. Rob. You know, to be fair, you get to choose what you're following, either by tags or by people whom you follow. So when I think of Twitter, I don't very really think of those celebrities. They are a completely uh, kind of perpendicular to anything that I do, um, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Well, that's one of the nice features about these sites, is that they're very tag-based, and very community-based, uh, and people who are associated with you will be people with similar interests and similar points of view or similar friends, followers, and you know, people sometimes who they follow. So, sometimes it is nice to browse, and also the Diaspora has the one, one thing which Google Plus at the moment lacks, and that's hashtags. And, of course, on Twitter we see it all the time, unscrupulous individuals who use Twitter to uh, sell products will use a hashtag that's popular in order to get their message out to other people. I mean, hashtags on, on Diaspora are absolutely fantastic. They work perfectly. And when I click on one, everything that's listed in, in the stream is absolutely relevant or on the same subject as what I'm, uh, what I'm looking for. No, no that's because it's a small site, though. Yeah, I exactly. Think, I think that's the same case if you look at the people who joined early on in... Uh, to a site like Identica, for example, or even what they used to say about using it before, you know, Google Groups and before it opened up to the public, it used to be more like an academic hangout. Mm. hangout. Uh, so it used to be very formal. It was just write, writing formal emails to people and having very serious conversations before they had the binaries and games and all kinds of kids coming around to swap insults. Uh, and that, that does exist today in Usenet. So one of the perceptual, well, Basically, when things go mainstream, they kind of go down a bit in terms of quality because you've got the dilution of the of the, of the signal, and that, that's okay and it's expected though. Uh, the problem is though, if you and I think that's one of the reasons people might be uh, exploring a bit outside of Identica. I mean, I, I think I'm kind of uh, one of those people. At least looking what else is out there, out of curiosity, is because they have a very rest a very small universe of people like yourself, but when you want to try and expose ideas to people who are not already thinking like what you think, mm. uh, it might be necessary to go out there and try and find uh, more uh, discussions. You know, actually discussions yeah. of lack of consent sometimes. I actually find Twitter, I get like sometimes, sometimes I get trolling or posters and things, people who are just like setting up accounts to harass me or 
mm-hmm. you know, to, to use my face and stuff, and then like trying to, uh, you know, that that's the type of maturity you'd see in Twitter. But that's just expected because they they choose the platform where they can cause the most uh, trolling and harassment, or trying to be dramatic about things. And some some people just pick up a fight or make very uh, unusual uh, uh, points of view heard just because they know it's going to get some some attention. So they don't actually mean these things. They just they just know this is the way for them to get noticed. So to pick up on bigger uh, kind of more visible people. They call it bigger or whatever, so so that then people will pay attention to them, uh, and, and it's it's quite it's quite a trouble. I think in identity is very much actively discouraged, and when they I think they've shut down some accounts of people who are impersonating and uh, and basically just looking to defame a person in identity. So I know I know that there used to be some troublesome accounts there too. Well, just um, just briefly in closing, uh, in regards to the Asper, it is it is currently still in alpha and it is still invite only, I believe. But if anybody does want to invite, uh, please get in touch with me. Obviously, confirm that you're human, and uh, I'll certainly send an invite out to you. It really is a good service. Now, I've been bugging Roy for quite a long time to join Diaspora, and uh, Roy's been very busy with his other projects, and uh, I, I don't think I uh, gave it much thought until recently. But Roy, after your first couple of days. Can you sum up in a sentence what your first thoughts of diaspora are? Uh, it's very simple, and then the way I explained it before, it's very minimalistic. To the extent where you kind of say, uh, you kind of click here, click there, and you say, "Hmm, this is it," and you kind of think, "Hmm, or what, what do I do now?" Except for posting a few things, because it is, it is very, very minimalistic. Uh, you don't find very options, very uh, very many options that you'd expect. It's just like you put your profile up, you connect with some people, you click here and click there. And, uh, for people who are used to um, some of the other services of this kind, um, well, obviously, what matters is the conversation between people, mm-hmm. and that's what you try. But I was quite surprised by the fact that after about you know a few minutes, I pretty much found everything and. And I just thought, well, there must be more to it. Uh, I, I, would, I, would, I would hope you've, you've delved into the hashtags and had a little look at... Uh, yeah, and that, that's pretty basic, isn't it? But yeah. The hashtags is a very... Uh, I mean, any site without... I mean, even, even blogs now have the notion of tags and... and you know, Google Plus, I believe, still doesn't. Now, please uh, correct uh, me if I'm wrong. I'm just zooming down my Google Plus. No, what about Facebook? Facebook? I, I don't use Facebook, so I'm not... Um, but I Google Plus, I believe, doesn't. And but I, th- I think Roy, I, th- I mean, I was hope you are enjoying it because I, I think it offers. Yeah, I enjoy, like I say, I enjoy yeah. very much the community. I, I don't yeah. think it's a, it's not really a place necessarily for boss people, like Identica might be, because it's like an open source alternative to Twitter. I think it's more of a place for the, the privacy conscious people, people who are escaping Facebook for some reasons. So you have to think in terms of these are people who are uh, having reasons to oppose Facebook to the point where they go to the sort of the anti-Facebook site, or the main competitor, or, or the opposite in terms of uh, uh, actually the anti-Facebook now is, is Google Plus. So one, I think one of the diaspora is really going to struggle to get those people who are anti-Facebook because they will go to Google Plus now instead of the you know this company with a strange name that they've never heard about. Uh, but the the people on that side, in, in a way, they in any case, the I, I don't know. I, I think they engage a bit more, and I think because the community is smaller, they feel like they have to like find their family. I mean, myself too. I have to find my circle of friends there because I'm just like a new user, mm-hmm. and I have to find who else is out there. So I'm being introduced to people in the site. And it's really nice. It's 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 almost as though it reminds me of Identica in the older days. It's almost as though people. You join the site. The site is not very big, but they try to encourage you to join and then to bring some people with you because they know that they were some of the early people on the site, and if it grows really big, they will be one of the seniors around. So they have an interest in finding, ensuring that the site grows bigger. And the way to do that is to try and bring more recruits. It's a bit like a, it's a bit like a religion, just without the religion, just without the. The the nice thing about that is, you, people are bringing other tech interest or relevant people to the site and I think that's why when I'm looking down my stream at the moment there's not a single topic which is 
out of context or inappropriate or scary. Well, people or... bring people by invites. There's always a trail of, you know, who brought you here? Mm. Like, <laughs> I mean, obviously, a person is looking to create an account to troll. I don't think if I wanted to create an account to troll, for example, in theory, uh, you know, you wouldn't ask a person.